Welcome to the Locks DFS Podcast, everybody. I'm Christian Hardy here with Addy and Taylor, and we're here to break down the Thursday night showdown for week six. We're here, week six, five weeks down. And this it seems is like the-, the NFL season always moves by really fast. There's so much anticipation, and then as soon as it gets here, it just and goes by so quickly. You know when it's really going to start moving fast is like probably for Addy, like with NHL, but not next week with you doing NBA. Like that's when it's going to start cruising because yeah. you're just going to like be doing that all week, and then NFL is going to be like, boom, it's here. Like the next week is yeah, here. Yeah, by the way, we're going to be having NBA videos every morning, at least Monday through Friday, but I'm going to try to do it on the weekends as well. Yeah, that's a good like, note. Real down. Real quick, if you're new to our channel, subscribe, like the video if you like it, obviously at the end. Uh, but subscribe if you want to see content like this. We do it for all the showdowns, well, the Thursday and the Monday showdowns, but on our website, logsdfs.com, we provide lineups for all of the showdowns as well as we have hockey. And if you go into our shop, you can buy month passes for a lot of different sports, college football, hockey. Um, obviously, a big one that we haven't moved up yet again is basketball starting next week. So, um, Obviously, the sports betting bat- pass from Addy every day as well. So lots of stuff that we're doing on the site. If you have any questions, you can obviously DM us on Twitter at LoxDFS. Our DMs are open. Um, okay, with all that said, also, you can follow us on Twitter. That's great. We've been getting a lot of subscribers, but not as many followers. So if you have a Twitter, all of the – everything that we, you know, are doing is kind of posted on Twitter. So um, all right, with all of that said, let's get into the showdown. Um, Philly versus the Giants. I told myself last time that once we started, I'd have the Vegas odds pulled up, and I don't. I don't have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got them. them. They, uh, the Eagles opened as 3.5-point uh, 3. favorites, and the over-unders started, are opened at 45, but with 78% of the bets on the over, you would think it would move up, but there's only 22% on the under, and it dropped 1.5 points, which means a lot of the sharp money, the people with the most money um, are betting on the under. So uh, a lot of sharp people think this game's going to hit the under, and that's what I think too. I, when I first saw this game, um, it, it just the under seems so inevitable to me just because the Eagles have been so poor on offense since Wentz has been back, well, pretty much all year. And um, – the Giants' offensive line is dead last, and with the Eagles having putting so much pressure on the quarterback, it's hard to imagine Eli Manning having much uh, time to uh, pass the ball. I, I, I see it being a really low-scoring game. Yeah, I think that's what it really comes down to, that last part that you touched on. Uh, the Giants' offensive line, I think, is what's really going to make or break sort of the flow of this entire game. If Philly can get pressure at will on the Giants' offensive line and the Giants haven't schemed around that, to get some quick outs and uh, keep Eli upright. Um, I definitely think that this game could end up being low scoring. But on the other hand, it could also end up – I mean, when you look at Philly's weakness, it is their pass defense, you know. So, I mean, pass defenses tend to – I mean, weak pass defenses tend to lead to higher scoring game uh, just inevitably because the pass – I mean, passing so much more efficient. Um, and, I mean, if, if the Giants are prepared for this, the fact that it's at home makes me kind of – a little more interested. Um, I, I mean, we know that bad offensive lines don't really travel too well. So I, the fact that they're at home is kind of interesting. But I think in the just general thoughts, I, I do agree. I do think it'll. I do think the under is probably the sharp play, as as many at Vegas agree. Um, injury wise, the Eagles pretty much are now have Clement and Wendell Smallwood at running back. You can see their prices here. They're pr- both pretty prices down here with the defensive kickers right above that tier there. Um, they're obviously going to be in play with that because Sproles and Ajay are both out. Um, as you can see here, Evan Ingram's also out. So that, those are the big ones. Um, other than that, uh, we pretty much got fresh everything. So I guess uh, we'll just start from the beginning of captain, I guess. Where are we looking, I guess, for the beginning of captain? Obviously, if you're thinking about top scores. It, I would think it probably ends at about Ertz, but if you're thinking about salary, these guys kind of get into discussion as well as the running backs. So we know have a, are going to have a pretty big role. Um, I think all those guys probably viable for MVP. So I guess where where you guys think you go? Yeah, so I I've been messing around with it all day, and I think I'm going to go with a lower price guy like Clement. I think the running backs for the Eagles they're supposed to be splitting carries, but uh, Clement is pretty superior uh, just as talent. Um, goes just because he's so efficient in the red zone. Um, his pass catching ability gives him a high floor. Um, definitely underpriced there. And I think 
unlike the past showdowns that have been going on, like the Saints one, there's not as many plays in this game. Um, everything's really condensed, especially with the Giants having uh, Ingram out. It's pretty much just Saquon, Odell, and then Sterling Shepard to an extent. Pretty much no one else on the team is even in targetable. I mean, you could talk about Eli, but I think having – in a low-scoring game, I would rather have those condensed plays that are going to get a lot of catches because um, they just present such a higher higher floor. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to pay down so I can fit in the top guys like Saquon, like Zach Ertz, like Odell. Um, I think that's the route I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, I like that. I think uh, I think there's an interesting case to be made for Sterling Shepard here. I like the price on him at 11.7. I really like the price on Alshon at 12K. I think the interesting note on Alshon is the fact that versus Minnesota, a team that also has a shutdown corner in Xavier Rhodes, we saw Alshon Jeffrey run half his routes in the slot, which is interesting because the Giants have the same with Janoris Jenkins. And so if we see that, I really like Alshon. I mean, we see as, as Hardy has it pulled up, the targets are there. Um, and he's really underpriced. I mean, he's arguably their top offensive weapon, and he's not priced as their top, op- top offensive weapon. So uh, I think he's interesting in the captain spot. Um, and then just speaking on Sterling Shepard, I know you have the, the air yards pulled up for the Eagles, but if we go to the Giants and we go to Sterling Shepard, I mean, we've seen in the past three weeks with Ingram out, Shepard has a 22% target share, which is like a big upgrade on, on where he usually sits as kind of the third pecking third in the pecking order. Um, he's a legit second in the pecking order. And I mean, this, this Eagles defense weakness is their cornerbacks. Uh, so again, if Eli can get time to play, I, I like I like Shepard as well, just in general and in the captain spot. Right, yeah. I, I like Sterling Shepard a lot just because I think how the game breaks down a, a lot to do with NFL DFS is the game script and how you have to predict how the game flow is going to be. And if you think the Eagles are going to be on top of Eli and that offensive line not giving him much time, you're going to want to target the guys uh, who have super low A dots. Um, and that's why I like Saquon and Sterling Shepard so much just because they're – a dots are super low. Um, I think Saquon's A dot on the season is like 0.2 or 0.4, which is obvious for a running back. But I can see a lot of checkdowns um, coming through here because you saw the game against the against Dallas when they were just the offensive line couldn't block at all, and Eli had zero time. They passed to him what 16 times, and he had 14 catches. I I could see a similar thing happening here. And with Sterling Shepard, his ADOS is pretty low at seven. Um, little short routes. I could see that happening a lot too. Because in that same game against Dallas, uh, Evan Ingram had a pretty pretty good game. Um, and I think Sterling Shepard takes over that role. Um, so, yeah, I like both those players a ton. Yeah, uh, Saquon's interesting because there's like multiple avenues to his success, you know, like he's not he's not sort of a one trick pony. So, like, I think uh, we know that the the cure to a bad offensive line is running the ball and getting the ball out of your quarterback's hands quickly. And that both is Saquon, um, as as Christian said, with his a dot being two point one in the past three weeks. I mean, that's incredibly low. And I mean, the the Philly Philly is like the sixth best team versus the run this year, but they do drop to 16th versus pass catching running backs. And, and Saquon fits that bill to a T. So definitely a, 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 a slightly better than perceived matchup for Saquon. Yeah, and I think I saw earlier that Saquon is third in the league in snaps, only behind Todd Gurley and James Conner. He might be fourth but behind Conner. No, no, no. Per, per game, yeah, he's behind Conner, Christian McCaffrey, and Gurley. So he's going to be on the field the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely a super high floor. I, I'm surprised he's not the highest – uh, he doesn't have the highest salary on this slate. Who do you guys want to put in captain for the sake of the YouTube lineup? Well, let's do Clement so we can fit in these guys. Yeah, let's do Clement. Okay, so then let's so then let's kind of pick from there. I think we've kind of talked about the slate a decent amount. Um, I, I guess the one thing we should talk about is our thoughts on the quarterbacks um, and how the game flow is going to fit for them in terms of like putting them in the lineups because obviously QB ones are uber popular. Yeah, I think. So when you break – I mean, the most optimal thing most of the time is to play both the quarterback ones just because of the highest scoring. But the more I play these slates, the more I think that in, if you predict the game to be low scoring and not many touchdowns, you want the offensive pieces who are going to get uh, get more points for yards and points for receptions and stuff. Quarterbacks don't get that many points for passing yards. Um, and if there's not going to be that many touchdowns, uh, I think you want 
the more involved players. So I think I prefer the likes of Odell and uh, Saquon and Ertz for sure over the quarterbacks this week. Yeah, it seems like those three in terms of like touches are a, a really, really strong core to have um, because Ertz is getting a crazy amount of targets from – both, I mean, he was getting them from Foles, but he's getting them from Wentz, too, and now he gets a cake matchup with the Giants. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. Zach Ertz has a uh, 30% target share on the year, and he has 58 targets so far this year, which is 12 more than the second tight end in the league with Travis Kelsey. It's, it's just absurd. Um, you know that's where Carson Wentz is looking. Uh, Giants aren't that good against the tight end. Um, seems like another game where he's going to have 10, 11, 12 targets in a soft matchup. Um, yeah, I like for it. me, for me, if I don't play Clement and captain, I'll probably play Ertz and captain and find find a way to make it fit. I just kind of ended up in a dead zone with Ertz and captain, so I like Clement and captain as well right now, um, as it's looking. Um, okay, now you've got six three left with those three guys. Let's just say we stick with the, the quarterback fade in this lineup since we've got the condensed kind of target shares on each team. Um, one one last note on the quarterback fade. I think a uh, quarterback fade is always most viable when. Uh, you can project like high PPR points for like or high high receptions for the other guys like in check yeah. down situations mm-hmm. like this. So this is exactly what we have for Eli. So like we could genuinely see Eli complete like twenty five passes to his receivers yet only only throw for maybe you know two hundred yards or something like that. Like we could see we could see a lot of high floor games from these guys. Um, and maybe and maybe not replicated in Eli's score. For this build, if you did want a quarterback, there's a guy I like at a thousand dollars, Cody Latimer, um, mm-hmm. who should be, run as a, for sure the third. I mean, who's I mean, if you guys see anyone else who's going to run as a third route runner for the Giants, let me know. But I don't see anyone. Uh, I mean, um, I guess Rhett Ellison, if he plays, might run like as a tight end, just a normal tight end, you know. So maybe he'll run some routes. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, Latimer Rhett seems like the guy who's going to be the third one. Rhett Ellison was in play. I mean. Like on the main slates, I mean, if you want a, t- a tight end, he's going to get maybe four or five targets. So if he plays, I don't know. I don't even know who their backup tight end is behind him. Right. Uh, it's Scott I guess- Simonson. I think he's more of a blocking tight end. I think I think there's a chance that they play a ton of two tight end sets, and Scott Simonson will be the one blocking. So Red Ellison could get some targets this week. For sure. I mean, I mean, those are just pump plays, but I mean, yeah. stuff stuff to keep an eye out for because you know we record this like the night before, and then it feels like the day of. There's so many things that we want, like the last one with Traquan, we wanted to talk about and Mo Harris and all that. So I, stuff like that could happen, and so uh, those guys are always like keep them in mind, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you play Latimer there, can you plug in Eli? If you play a lot, <laughs> my bad. No, you can put in a. There's a, there was a moth that flew into the windows on my desk. Anyway, uh, now you can put you can play Carson Wentz if you put Latimer there. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. so that's definitely a route to go for sure. Definitely right. I had a lot of. I was messing with a lot of team earlier. Um, I think the optimal thing to do is to play. Um, is to play Smallwood. Yeah. So then we get the other running back uh, who sh- who you know Smallwood is going to get probably more between the carries, tackles, and Clement. I would imagine. So what do you think uh, this what's going to be? It's going to be like 60-40 Clement, 65-35? The last time Ajayi was out, I think it was 19-16 Clement. Yeah, that's the thing. But Clement's also been out for a couple of weeks. And Smallwood has performed pretty well in his opportunities lately. Scored a touchdown, um, receiving touchdown last week. So I think they both have pretty strong floors. I think there is room for debate for uh, Smallwood versus um, – Versus the uh, kickers. I think even – well, then you – small because versus Clement. If, if you play a kicker, you can play Eli as well. You've got to figure out if you want Clement or Small, and you've got to figure out if you want one of those two guys, your second guy over Clement – or, sorry, over the kickers. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Clement is, is by far a better play than Small would. Yeah. Um, I think we got to li- – I think that could be something that changes on game day, though. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So, with, that's something we're definitely going to be – a big thing that's going to change in the final lineup. Um, It'd be interesting if the kickers um, with this slate, like if Clement and Smallwood kind of soak up all that uh, value that people are like all all the low price plays, if that's all going to Clement and Smallwood, all that ownership. And the fact that typically what the most optimal thing to do is play both kickers. If that strategy is going to go under owned in general, then that's also a good interesting take for GPPs. Like if people aren't going to play both kickers, because that typically um, especially for games like this that we can project to be low scoring is probably the most optimal thing to do as far as like just 
you know, that in both QB ones. Um, so Roses that, has been good. I like that. Yeah, Roses has been good. So is Jake Elliott too. So, yeah. so um, yeah, especially in these lower scoring games, I think kickers are are super optimal. But we're this is like a weird scenario where they've kind of given us these running back plays. Yeah, uh, and that's a good point. They're going to soak up a ton of ownership down here as the salary, uh, the cheap salary players. So kickers could go under owned, even though kickers are, could possibly be the more optimal uh, spot. Right. Real quick to wrap it up, um, I think the, just the last thing since we have it in the lineup now is just talk about these last two receivers in your preference, Alshon Jeffrey versus uh, Sterling Shepard, which we talked about them a decent amount through the podcast, but I guess a final say. Hmm. I mean, it's really close for me. Yeah, Shepard, since Ingram's been out, has had a 22% target share for the Giants. And like I said um, – if they're not, if the line or if the Giants don't have much time to pass the ball, it's going to be these short A dot guys that are going to get the ball a ton. Uh, so Shepard could do that, and then Alshon Jeffrey, they're moving him around trying to get him open. Uh, I think he's got nine and eight targets the last two weeks. Has a twenty percent target share, not, not too bad. And if he's playing in the slot where Janoris Jenkins only plays five percent of the snaps, he could. Uh, he, he, I don't know, and he also has the probably the highest touchdown equity, um, even over a guy like Ertz. So it's really close. I think I side with I think I side with Jeffrey though. Yeah, I think I'll take Jeffrey too, just a better quarterback. I mean, I, I'd rather rely on Wentz than Eli. Yeah, for sure. Especially in twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And also I think that Wentz has a better line in front of him too. One more I mean, Eli's line is who this, this Giants this Giants like offense could go to shit. On yeah. on on Thursday night, but this and it's like a likely scenario. But this Philly offense, like the odds of it going to shit, it's probably not if, that. If the Giants were on the road and in Philly, I would be much more likely to go for the Giants are going to be shit narrative, even harder. Oh, yeah. If the Giants were on the road in Philly, I'd have the Philly defense in the captain's. Yep, spot. I think so too. Actually, <laughs> I, they in the captain's. I would just, I would, I would definitely have both. Eagles defense are going to get theirs in this game. Yeah, I think there is merit because I mean the number one thing that you're looking for when you're playing a defense is pressure on the quarterback and they should be all over Eli this game because I mean there's sacks and it could create a fumble could create a bad pass for an interception and th- that's how you score touchdowns um on a defense so I yeah. mean they're definitely viable for sure definitely yeah. viable. guaranteed Dallas Goder is going to tilt us at the end of the day with oh for sure taking the Zach Ertz touchdown just guaranteed <laughs> like it's just it's coming um all right let's that's it that's it uh thanks so much for listening if you're not subscribed again subscribe uh, and if follow us on Twitter at LockDFS as well. Um, with all that said, oh yeah, one our thing. passes also. We got a full line Philly goal just now. Yo, I just I Vor- that's what Vortec, I was looking at right before. Vortec from Giroux and Gostas Bear. So if you Ooh. haven't joined the NHL team yet, got to. You got yeah, it's already right. looking like it's gonna be the gonna fourth, be cra- on a three game. in a row tonight. On a three game slate, that's gonna go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I mean, those guys. I'll, I'll say they are chalk, but like, uh, I mean, they're not like you know. The fact that you have all three. Yeah, we got all three of them. So even if they're all like fifty percent, it doesn't even matter. You know, we got them all. All right. Um, but yeah, let's get out of here. Let's do it. If you want to join the NHL, you have any questions about NFL or whatever, you can DM us at LoxDFS. Uh, that's it. All right. Thanks so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs> Yo, I saw, I saw like, uh,